So here we are. I'm with Joan Bishop. And um, Joan, do you want to tell us which, what organization you're from? Family Partnership? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm from uh, Family and Partner Mediation and I work in Kent in London. OK. And, uh, and, and Joan is a family mediator. And I'm Soila from the divorcemagazine.co.uk. And this is our third part of an interview all around family mediation and a process where that Joan uses to actually get the couple in the mediate, mediation room, whether it's a couple or, you know, like you said, sometimes it can be other relations, to end where they are to welcome the new side or the new life that they're now going to be getting into after the mediation is over and after the divorce is over. And um, Joan, you've mentioned this process and you've given us a super analogy about how to, to look at it and how to deal with it that you use with your clients. Um, what, and you mentioned three questions. We've looked at two. Can you, can you remind us what the two are? And then we'll look at question three. Okay. So the first question was how the couple knew that relationship was over yes. and the associated pain for the person who's been left. Yeah. So feels like the person that's been left. The second one um, was about the emotions associated with um, being in the situation that they're in. And I described a football and a rugby ball. And I think it's important to say that these emotions that I'm asking them to look at are not just about themselves, but about the other person, um, because then I want them to put them in a suitcase beside them so that yes. they can move on to being business-like. Yeah. But of course, emotions will arise, and that's a natural part of, of the process. The third question um, is optimistic, because we have to be optimistic, I think. We are moving on. So I take them on holiday with me, um, and I take them to Austria, usually, to the mountains. Mm -hmm. And I say that when they were together, they lived in the mountains um, and in a beautiful chalet in the, in the woods. On a summer's day, they had their first child. And I asked them whether they were both there at the birth of the child. Um, and then, if there is a child, then we'll talk about how important that is when you have your first child, the, the wonderful experience. There's nothing to compare with it and the way that you feel so unified. And then I say that, sadly, something's happened that means you can't live in this particular place anymore. So you have two valleys that you need to travel to. So one to the left and one to the right, north and south. Um, and in those valleys, each of them will have a new chalet, which is equally beautiful. And in the future, they will visit each other's chalets. And one side one will go to visit so they'll go up and down the mountains to the other side and the children will be playing in the garden so maybe a little boy riding his bike a little girl making a daisy chain so we can see them there in this lovely sunny day and they look up and it's their mum coming to see them and they say to their daddy daddy it's mummy it's mummy and they run to the gate and daddy holds her hand and takes them there mummy comes to the gate and she's welcomed in for a cup of tea or glass of wine or whatever they feel is right they sit down at a table and the children come and sit on their knees and look up at their faces and are smiling because they're talking to each other they talk about what's been happening whilst the family's been or the children have been with dad and then dad takes their hand and mum takes the other child's hand and they go to the gate and they walk up and down the mountain back to the other side a while later dad does this same journey but the other way and the children are in the garden again having a tea party um, and there's a paddling pool. So one's in the paddling pool, one's playing with the tea set. They look up and they see their daddy and they say, mummy, it's daddy, daddy's coming. And mummy smiles, they walk to the gate, take mummy and daddy's hands, sit down and they join the tea party. And they're all smiling together and talking about what's happened, what will happen. And then obviously the children, the daddy leaves and goes on his journey. So. I say to them, do you think I'm mad describing that for you? Do you think you can achieve that? Because it's within your hands to create that, that place and your children would love it. So can you tell me um, when you look at this mountain on a scale of one to ten, what does it look like and how far are you up that? Because that will tell you how you will find this process. And then I ask them what the path looks like. And they describe, can describe the path because the path will tell you what the journey feels like it will be. Some people say they can't see a path. Occasionally I have people say they got to a crossroads and they need the other person to help them up that path. Others say they go up it and they slide down. Um, some cannot see the path and we say they're still under the bed. Mm. There to look out yeah. to the future. 
So that description actually tells each other where they are. And if one is saying, I'm, uh, I'm in that valley, I'm already there, and the other person saying I'm under the bed, then they're in very different places. So we were saying that we were going to talk about when you know something is ready to be mediated. Yes, yeah. So that yeah. gives you an idea. Of course. And then, because if somebody's moved on and is really happy and the other person isn't, isn't in that place and needs help to be in that place, they might need some sort of therapy. They just might need time. Yeah. Because we can see people as mediators. Sometimes they've been separated five years, sometimes three days, a week two weeks okay, wow. so seeing them at, sometimes very quickly sometimes after a long period of time um, and so readiness for mediation is really important and as a mediator you have to feel that this couple can work together and if they can't now what would need to happen to let them do that to encourage them because what we don't do as mediators is set people up to fail yes. they're already in a place where they maybe feel that they have failed and my work I feel should be quick. I don't think people should come and see me for months and months and months. Um, they're in pain and they want to get rid of that pain as soon as they can. And they want it to be efficient and businesslike. Yes. So everything has to be right for that. And a mediator will say, well, maybe this isn't the moment and then discuss what would need to happen. So that's the purpose of the questions. So when I've asked the questions, yes. um, people will answer. Yes. Lots of lovely things are said. Do they do they answer? Um, do they write it down, or do they answer verbally? Verbally, and I just say to them, "Who would like to start?" All right. Sometimes better if the lever says because they have answered the questions. Mm. So I think for many people who are the left, they do not understand what they did. They're just shocked. What did I do? Um, and if somebody can talk to them about maybe what they feel they did. Um, it helps them to understand and maybe opens their, their mind and heart to be able to talk. Yeah. So um, usually the lever begins and they don't interrupt each other and they answer all of the questions yeah. um, and I feed back as, as they're going through and then um, I ask the other person not to refer to what was said but then to talk about themselves. themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if, um, if a couple was prepared, because that tells you whether they're ready for mediation or not, if a couple was, they've decided, you know, like I had a, a client call yesterday who wants to get into mediation, um, what would you advise them to do so that the mediation process can be not only shorter but actually successful? What preparations can they make? Okay, well, the initial preparation is this, talking about it, getting rid of the emotions, identifying them. Yeah. Um, and then I would say... Preparing your mind to be open. I don't think you have to do any particular work mm -hmm. um, because if you feel that you have the answers and if you want to come for the answer and have it in 10 seconds, yeah. actually you're really underestimating the, the work that's needed. If it was that easy, you'd have sorted it out. Yeah. What you have to do then is to put your trust in the mediator to know what they are doing and to be able to guide you through the process, mm -hmm. to be patient and to follow the process. Um, and to be willing to answer, ask questions. But actually a mediator's job is to ask questions of people, not to give opinions. Yes, so yes. I'm always asking questions. So to be ready to answer those questions in a, in a respectful way, to honour the relationship that they had, and to commu communicate and cooperate as far as they can. But a good mediator will create that environment for you. Um, because we know it's incredibly difficult. And most yes. people who come to me are very, very frightened. Yeah. Um, and acknowledging that is very important um, and that they will be safe. They're going to be safe. I can create a safe environment for them um, and that they have had really positive relationships in the past. So why can't they have those now? Okay, Joan, thank you so very much. Thank you very much. If anybody wanted to contact you, um, how can they go about it? Where can they find you? Well, the best place really is to go to my website, which is www familypartnermediation.co.uk Okay, all right, and you'll be there. To hear from them. Yes, yes, and I'm very happy to see them at any time. And I also, I think important to add that I have a team of mediators with me, and for me, cultural awareness is really important. Yes. So I have a, a mediator who speaks uh, Portuguese, 
and one who speaks Greek. Right. And they are their mother t mother tongues. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously those of us who speak English, but if there are mediators who want to join me who are able to provide mediation in another language. Okay. Because culture is not about just language, it's about what goes on in your family. And exactly. I think exactly. hard time you want somebody who can speak your language and can understand your culture. Okay. So, oh, thank you so much, Joan. That was really so be pleased with that. And I wish them all the very best in thank their you. journeys. And to you too. Thank you for asking me to join you so much. Oh, thank you for being here, Joan. Thank you. Thank you.